Yo, what's up, Internet? My name is Anthony, and day two of the NFL draft just concluded. In the second round, the Raiders selected OB Milanfowu, safety from UConn, and in the third round, they selected Eddie Venderdoss, UCLA, defensive tackle. As expected, the Raiders went defense and defense. Let's take a deeper look at how these players fit in with the Raiders. First up, we have Obi Milanfomu, safety, Yukon. He's a genetic freak at 6 foot 4 and 224 pounds. He ran a 44040 and tested freakishly at all events at the combine. Many people want best player available, and that's just what the Raiders got. In fact, many analysts had Obi going in the end of the first round. If the Raiders had drafted him at number 24, nobody would have batted an eye. I was shocked to see that he was still on the board when the Raiders were on the clock. On tape, he's a second round pick. After seeing his athleticism, many had him jump all the way into the first round. Zach Cunningham was there and perhaps filled the bigger need, but if best player was available, it was this guy. Athleticism shows up on tape and he has outstanding coverage and ball skills. He needs to be more physical and play to his ability as a freak of nature. He can play center field on the defense as a free safety and maybe some linebacker in nickel situations. Now for the grade. I have to give this one an A. On tape, he was a second round pick. If he ever matches his physical gifts, he has a chance to be a real steal. I don't see him beating out Reggie Nelson at free safety this year, but he will be on the field. If nothing else, he can cover tight ends up and down the field, which has been a huge problem for the Raiders in recent years. The Raiders might have just gotten their safety tandem for the future, with Milan Fumu at free safety and Joseph at strong safety. Now for a third round pick, Eddie Vanderdoss. In typical Reggie McKenzie defensive line fashion, he picked a play with tremendous upside rather than going for a safer but lower ceiling pick. I personally would have liked Montrevious Adams from Auburn, but Vanderdoss does have a much higher potential. He looked great in 2014 and looked well on his way to being a first round pick. Then he tore his ACL in 2015 and never seemed to recover at UCLA. He got heavy and was out of shape. At the Senior Bowl, he lost some weight and exploded onto the scene looking like he did early at UCLA. He is a disruptor and is more of a run stopper than an interior pass rusher. Now for the grade, I'm giving this one a B. The Raiders need a defensive tackle, and McKenzie gambled on a high ceiling player. ACL tears are scary, and you never know how a player will recover. Vanderdoss needs to keep his weight down and keep his explosiveness. If he ends up in his pre-ACL and dominant defensive tackle form, then the Raiders end up with a steal. On the flip side, he stays at his weight and ends up becoming a rotational piece. Let's remember, he was a 5-star recruit and looked on his way to being a first-round pick before the ACL injury. Now for some draft prospects to look for. First up, we have Ben Gideon, inside linebacker, Michigan. Call it a typical McKenzie linebacker. He works hard and has high football character. The problem is he's limited athletically. He has good technique, but his limited ability could show up on game time. The Raiders need linebackers, and he fits the mold of what McKenzie likes to pick. Next up, we have Jalen Davenport, offensive tackle, Bucknell. He is a raw tackle, but has lots of athletic ability. He stands at 6'7", with long, 37-inch arms, and was a captain. He got away with technique since he played against lower-level competition, but that won't work in the NFL. If the Raiders are able to develop him, he could start at right tackle, and has the talent to one day start at left tackle. Lastly, we have Vince Bigel, linebacker, Wisconsin. Another McKenzie linebacker. He has more potential standing at 6'3", and is a team captain. His football character is about as high as you want in a person. He has decent speed and recognition to play linebacker, but his main problem is he needs to get stronger. When he gets locked up with the lineman, he lacks the strength and athleticism to break through. He has good size and intangibles and could fit into what the Raiders look for in a linebacker. Overall, Reggie McKenzie stuck to his board and went best player available. I love the Obi Milan Fungu pick. He could end up playing some linebacker for us and would definitely help us in coverage, especially against those pesky tight ends. His defensive tackle pick is kind of like the Jihad Ward and Mario Edwards Jr. theme. High ceiling, but there are tremendous question marks. Let's hope that Reggie McKenzie stocks up on some inside linebackers, because currently, we don't have any. Thanks for watching, guys, and enjoy day three of the draft.